finished 11th overall. Um, I believe he was 11th out of 49 hurdlers. Uh, he also was in a heat, a preliminary heat, with uh, one of the top P1 hurdlers in the country, uh, a hurdler from USD. And then uh, a D2 hurdler actually won the whole meet and, and ran a, an NCAA Division II uh, all-time fast time in the high hurdles. So, so he was up against some pretty good competition in, in the meet. Uh, Josh Thomas, we took down, he was in three events. Uh, he ran the 60 meter dash, probably would, uh, did not improve any of his three events, but was pretty solid in all three performances. Finished 23rd in the 60 meter dash out of 88 competitors. In the long jump, he was 24th out of 66. A little bit behind Tristan this week. Normally, he jumps further than Tristan does. And then in 200, he finished 38th out of 130 uh, sprinters in, in that competition. So. A pretty good competition for us. Uh, this week we go to Black Hill State. Uh, it'll be probably a, a much smaller meet with uh, fewer competitors. Being that the conference is, is in two weekends, a lot of coaches don't like to compete the weekend before. We're going to use this as a tune-up and, and try to get maybe a little better seat times for our kids going into the conference meet. And uh, So we're not going to overwork any of our kids. They're going to run one or two events. Uh, and see if we can get them, get them set up to have a, a competitive uh, first RMAC conference championship. So, any questions? Jerry, where's the RMAC? The RMAC is going to be in Gunnison, Colorado in, uh, in two, in two Saturdays, two, two Fridays from this coming Friday. Um, Gunnison's an interesting place. We ran the, the conference cross country meet there. Uh, about 7,500 feet in elevation. Uh, really beneficial to the uh, jumpers and the throwers and the sprinters. Um, not so beneficial to the distance runners. So it's going to be a mixed bag when we go up there. Um, probably won't take the whole team, but we will take the, the athletes that have the, the best opportunity to be, to be competitive. And, uh, we'll take as many as we possibly can to uh, be able to bring home a little bit of hardware. So, yeah. Where's that kid from? Uh, uh, Garrett Lane is from uh, Denver area. No, the oh um, the the, the, one, the uh, NCA hurt the yeah. D two hurdler it was from Mankato State or uh, Minnesota State Mankato. So, the question: When is the national conference or the uh, not national but the conference? The conference is it will it will start a week from Friday. Yeah. So, other questions? All right, thank you. Thanks, Coach. Uh, the Hard Rocker men's basketball team got to go to Texas, and it was finally nice weather. That was the good thing about it. They did play one of the best teams in the country, had a very uh, challenging weekend. Welcome up, Jason Hen, head coach of the Hard Rock. Yeah, we did finally. Uh, it was our fifth time there, and it was the first time that it was actually 70 degrees and sunny. And what our players from Texas tell us about all the time that Texas always is, and all those kind of things. And they, for the first time, uh, weren't lying. Um, as far as uh, how it went, um, I wouldn't say it went as expected because I, I thought we would have played a little bit better and all those kind of things. But it was finally the first weekend. Um, especially this time of year um, when, you know, I, I talked to the BH guys, actually the gals, uh, over there, the coaches, they called about something and, and uh, they're talking about their season and right now, going into last weekend, if they would have won in those two and then the next two, they could have finished as high as second. If they lose two of the four or two, they'd finish, you know, 10th or 11th, something like that. So everybody else is in the conference uh, time, so now they go to practices. Uh, they're getting better, they're working on things and all that kind of stuff, and, and you get with us, and it's just, the guys are just going, oh, okay, well, let's get through the year. You know, you're not really planning for anything, and, and it always makes you nervous going into those practices and into those games, and we came away with those games, and, and I felt everything but that, and, and I was as excited as I've ever been um, after, well, one, get your butt kicked, but uh, uh, as excited as I've been, even with this team, this team, 
and our guys, especially having uh, so many young guys. Uh, but even the Connor Coolest, and he's a prime example of what I'm talking about, of how far we've really came this year and how far we still have to go. But I think the light actually turned on and flickered for you know a few of them, and if not, uh, basically our whole team. And uh, so, like I said, it, it was uh, you know wins and losses wasn't a very productive uh, weekend, but I, I'm as excited as I've been in two years after playing all these teams and the schedule that we have uh, moving forward. And, and one of the guys too that I can say that about is Connor Coolish. You know, I went back and I was just talking to Coach Webb about this yesterday. And, uh, I was like, <laughs> okay, we're playing the Lone Star, and I did look this morning. Um, but it's ranked as the number one team in the conference, or the number one uh, conference in the country. Uh, you know, they got the teams that we keep rattling on, the Tarletons and the Midwesterns and the whatever. Well, I want to see how we compete or, or uh, play against those teams. And I just went and looked at uh, Connor's uh, all-conference stuff came out for the RMAC and send your things in. And, you know, that's a region for us uh, in the RMAC because we have to go play those teams uh, uh, to qualify for the regional tournament, national tournament moving forward. And I looked through uh, how we did against the RMAC teams, how he did against the uh, uh, Lone Star and the regional and all that kind of stuff. But he's averaging 16.5 points, 16.9 even, uh, and 9.9 .9 or 9.8 rebounds. So against those Lone Star, what we keep talking about is the big time teams. And, uh, and he, you think of that and go, well, yeah, he's a good player and he does this and he does that well. As coaches, you know, we're, we're all looking to make them better or help them in the, the process, and, and Connor's no different. As much as we like what he does, we know he can do so much more. And the light bulb turned on finally for Connor, which, like I said, it's kind of crazy for you guys to hear that because you're like, you know, that guy's really good. The light bulb's been on. It hasn't been on for what he can go do and what he is capable of doing. And he played against uh, the second night, the defensive player, the whole conference uh, last year, will be this year again, and uh, scored his 23 points and had 16 rebounds or something crazy again. But the bottom line is he finally shot fake some of these athletes that we keep playing. And, you know, you've been telling him it for, you know, he didn't get to play last year against them, but even as a freshman, here's what you got to work on, your strength and that kind of stuff. And it finally, I hope, well, you hope as a coach, you think that as a coach, but until you hear the kids say that, or the young man, well, sure enough, we're done afterwards, and it was his 21st birthday on that day, and he came up to the coaches, and he's just like, geez, it took me to my 21st birthday to figure out the shot fake coach. You know? So you're just, you're just like, oh my gosh, this is finally going to you know, be so good for our program now that you have, you know, in our mind, our hardest worker, our best player, our leading scorer, our leading rebounder. And the light bulb, in my mind and in his mind, just finally came on of, now let's go see what he can do. Uh, so one example, uh, Eric Seabury's here. Another great example, we'll talk about him in a second. But just all the way down the line, we scored one point in like the first eight minutes against Angelo, and, and we got good looks, and we just didn't knock him down. We ran some sets. Uh, it wasn't there that their defense was just crazy athletic, and but it did change some stuff for us. And we had three points with ten minutes to go, and. Uh, you know, we're making fun of them. Coach uh, Larson, we're making fun of Nebraska and, and uh, who was it, Colorado and some of these teams. That, geez, they only scored 12 points in the first half. Or, geez, they only scored, you know, five points in, you know, 15 minutes. And going, geez, can you imagine that ever happening? And I sat there just going, I am shutting my mouth now. <laughs> that's exactly what happened to us is they did some things, of course, but it was a lot to do with us. And Anyway, uh, played decent the last 30 minutes and definitely the second half in that game. But then, like I said, we talked about it after the game, and let's take a step. we got to finally either do something and take a step to show that we can compete with these teams, show ourselves, uh, you know, yada, 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 all the things that we've talked about. And we really did that the second night. Um, once again, the shots just absolutely did not go in. We cut it to 12 or 13. Um, well, we were right hanging around the 18, 17-point mark basically the whole second half, and then, Cut it to, uh, you know, we go on a 5 or 6 old run, cut it to 11 or 12 points, and then miss like three threes in a row and had three turnovers in a row. And next thing you know, it ended up, you know, 17, 18 points again. So, anyway, as you know, disappointed as you are when you get in these games and you go traveling and you lose and all that kind of stuff, is just as, as excited as I've been in the two years of putting our guys through this and, and finding a way to, you know, prepare them, hopefully, for the conference coming up here. Uh, relatively soon now, and, and I think our guys, uh, like I said, I've just been as excited as I could be 
Um, and the simple fact that it's not playing for anything. You know, what happened to us last year, we played BH, beat BH by 15, and after that, you know, it's just like, well, what do we got to play for now? You know, let's go play because our seniors are seniors and the way we go. But we never really got better, and I felt like we got better. So hopefully that continues on the next couple days of practice, and then uh, we are done on Friday. We do play Friday at 7.30, play Johnson & Wales team. And uh, it's seniors night, it's parents night, uh, all those kind of things. So hopefully uh, we got a lot of parents that are coming, so hopefully we uh, have a great crowd support for them. Uh, and so on. The other part that it is is, uh, and, and Nate might talk about this, or Joel, I don't know if he's coming up and talking, but um, we do have an academic night for the first time that we've done, and I think it's absolutely awesome. But anybody that got like a 3.0 and above, either this first semester or have that as a cumulative, um, will be out on the court and, and whatnot. And I have like 10 guys and stuff, and Eric's one of them that uh, uh, above a 3.0 this semester and very proud of where he's at and what. You know he's going to uh, be doing uh, as I am with all the guys, but uh, we'll let him talk in a second here. So, any questions for me before I, I get done talking? <coughs> awesome. All right, Eric Seabury has been here for uh, uh, with us the last couple of years. Uh, you know, Eric's a special young man that can do a lot of different things that our guys, a lot of our guys, can't do on the court. And uh, you know, with, from injuries to uh, just a, a lot of different things, and, and again, guys coming in and playing well in front of him, us trying to move him to different spots going through the spring. He had as good a spring as we've had with the guys uh, uh, last spring and then going into this year. And, and uh, you know, I think, you know, talk about guys, it's flickering. <laughs> you know, the, the light bulb has gone on and off a couple of times, but uh, that's one of the things that I saw this weekend. We had another injury and stuff, so he got a lot more playing time. Uh, than he has this season. It's just kind of a numbers game. We try to go too deep in every spot, and, and you know, if you get done in practice, we'll give you that opportunity to be a backup guy or starter, you know, backup move to starter and all those things. And, and uh, Eric's had some opportunities. Well, now he's kind of back at the point guard, uh, which I think he's definitely would be better for us uh, at the wing and being able to play a little bit more wing. Uh, bottom line is when he's out on the floor, defensively is as good a guy as we have. we got as many touches as as anybody in practice, the things that we look for, tip balls and things, uh, but on the ball defender as good as we have. Uh, we need to clean up turnovers, clean up the things that, you know, get guys uh, more playing time and all those kind of things, but uh, bottom line is he still comes to practice every single day. And if you, any of the guys have learned anything from him uh, this year is the simple fact that, you know, whether he thinks he want, you know, everybody's a competitor, so they think they should be playing more, and mom and dad do, I'm sure, and all those kind of things, but. Bottom line is it doesn't affect him when he's on the floor, you know. So that's what I'm very proud of with him. And there are other guys that don't get a lot of playing time. They still come to get to practice and compete every day. So we'll let uh, Eric talk about his experiences here so far and uh, uh, what he's going to do and rule the world and be president and all those kind of things that you can make up whatever you want. This group believes anything you say. So it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome, Eric. So, Eric Seabrand. Uh, hi guys, my name is Eric, as you mentioned before. Um, I'm a third year industrial engineering student from Cleveland, Ohio. Go to Brown, go Cavs, go Browns. I actually ended up turning out here after my freshman year of college from Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York. So I mean, and my first time out here was actually for a semester in the summer, so I never got a chance to visit out here. So I was praying to God that I loved it out here because there was no turning back after that. But I did. I actually ended up loving it a lot. And so, I mean, last year, I played a half year. I got hurt. Tore my meniscus up a little bit. This year, I didn't play as much like you said. But, I mean, my dad has always taught me, don't let any of that face you know, Just go out there and play your best and play your hardest. And, I mean, people will see. So, so, like I said, I'm an industrial engineering major. Once upon a school side, um, I actually got an interview with Polaris this on Monday. I had to leave film to go take a call, so I felt bad for that. I thought he was gonna be mad at me, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, so I interviewed with them, and hopefully they don't score a call this summer. So hopefully they um call me back in a couple of days, and I can um, I end up getting that job. But, yeah, that's about it. I don't plan to rule the world yet. <laughs> I do have a baby face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for her? How did you find South Coast Tech? Well, actually, 
Coach kind of called me, and my dad called me one day after a business class, and he was like, um, well, the coach in the school in South Dakota wants to talk to you for engineering school, and have the same major, so I was like, oh. And it was a better situation for economics because I was at Rochester, that's Division three, so there was no scholarship for athletic money. I was paying 20000 a year with financial aid package and stuff like that, so I was like, well, I'll take that. <laughs> so, I'm on this Second part of the question, has your dad ever been able to come out and see you play? Uh, yes, my dad actually came out over Thanksgiving when we went to Denver. He flew to Denver and drove back with us and watched our three games here and then he flew back out. So he's been here to see us play. So what's the story of the camp? <laughs> it was good now. Finally, we were probably doing good. I was kind of nervous at the beginning of the year, but I don't know, we're figuring it out. I mean, once, once, like I said earlier, once those guys figure out what, when they want to click, we can get rid of playing some defense and everything in this game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we can get a little championship before I die, please. I want a championship in any sport, so. Um. Anything else for her? <laughs> Last but not least, save it for last, Hard Rock and Roman State coach Ryan Larson. They also went down south, won a couple of games. I don't want to set them up for a letdown, but opportunity to finish over 500 here as they come back home for a couple of games this weekend. Welcome up, Coach Ryan Larson. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Come to Pizza Ranch. Uh, that was me, that blue bike. Coach on the way out here, uh, I, was, I was hungry, but he left the important part out. He's flat out pulled right in front of me. You know, it was it was late. It was all move on his part. I wouldn't call it quite road rage, but it was close. Um, yeah, great to be here. We had a we had a, a fun weekend going down to northern New Mexico. Uh, long bus ride down there, uh, but it was it was well worth it. Uh, we stopped in Trinidad, Colorado, and grabbed some uh, some food. Shortly after that, the girls busted out uh, catchphrase, and uh, we played catchphrase from Trinidad all the way down to Espanola. Uh, I'm not sure how far that was, but it had to be close to 200 games of catchphrase. Uh, good fun. Uh, everybody was involved. Uh, our head trainer, Scott Baird, was involved. He's a pretty good catchphraser, uh, really good. Uh, best thing about that, we kept our bus, rider inter bus driver entertained. What entire way down there. He was getting a little sleepy and we kept him awake. So that was good. Uh, and then the games themselves. Uh, Friday night against Cal State, San Marcos. Uh, that was that was a good team that we played Friday night or Friday afternoon. Uh, they're very, very similar to what we are. The independent division two. Uh, our records were the same and were close to the same. And if you looked at the stats and compared the stats, uh, it was just eerie how similar both teams were. And uh, Four-point game at halftime. They were above. Uh, all we had to do was make some simple adjustments. Um, in that second half we played with us, geez, it was about as good a half, 20 minutes of basketball we played in a long time. And we we really knifed them up. And that, that was a good defensive team that we played. Uh, they played all man. That was the first time we'd seen <laughs> some man-to-man -man defense in a long time. Uh, but it was it was really good. Uh, the way we played. Uh, Alexis Long, had, who's here today with us, had a tremendous part in that. She finished the game with five assists, zero turnovers, and uh, a bunch of rebounds, and I think 10 points herself. Um, but she just played aggressive. Her and Callie Peterson, point guard, they, they played really aggressive and, and made some tremendous plays for us there. Uh, so that was that was a really good win for us. That, that, was, that was a good boost for us, uh, confidence-wise, offensively, and defensively also. As well, we were, that was the most beautiful game we played in a long time. And then Saturday, we turned around and played the host school of Northern New Mexico. Um, you know, it, it, it got to be long. You know, we played at 1 o'clock on Friday, um, killed the rest of Friday uh, night, uh, sitting around the hotel, got up the next day, shot around, and we had a big gap of waiting in between because we didn't tip off until 5 o'clock uh, on Saturday. Um, you know, it gets, it gets long. And the bus ride, from the day before, from the two days before, that's when that kicks in. Uh, so we were we were definitely fatigued that day. There's no doubt about it. And you know, geez, we're we're kind of a mash unit right now as well. Uh, Mackenzie Becker uh, is done for the year. She has a stress fracture. Uh, we figured that out uh, early last week, which 
which is really too bad because she was playing good basketball for us. You know, Coach Henry talked about the light bulb coming on. Well, hers was flickering for quite a while, and boom, it came on uh, about two weeks prior uh, to that injury, and uh, which is too bad because you know, it's, it's a bummer when kids really start to play well and they get injured. And she was she was putting in a lot of good minutes for us. She really was. And then in that northern, I'm sorry, the week before, again, Callie Peterson went down to practice and really jarred her back. And she had the stem machine on her back all the way down to northern New Mexico and we were trying to keep that thing loose. Uh, and then during the game against San Marcos, uh, Peyton Humple, her shoulder popped out. Um, so she was done the rest of that game. Uh, I, I got to give a ton of credit to Scott Barrett and uh, Derek Lisi, uh, not only the week before of keeping Cali, and I, I forgot Alicia Gallagher rolled her ankle really bad <laughs> in practice the week before, and she was on a really limited basis as far as playing time goes. So I got to get a ton of credit to Derek and Scott uh, for getting them healthy before the game, and then Scott traveled with us, and he he was probably the busiest, busiest person down there, right? <laughs> Between getting stem and ice and treatment and all that stuff for those kids. They did a great job of, of getting them healthy and keeping them healthy so they could play on Saturday. But anyway, back to our Saturday game. You know, again, really buggered up. Uh, Coach Mullis' rotations were, man, they were snappy just because we were so injured and keeping kids fresh. Um, you know, we, we didn't play our best game. There's no doubt about it. You know, fatigue sets in. Uh, the thing we talked about, you know, your, your legs can be tired, but your mind can't be. And that was part of our problem, too. We kind of turned over a little bit too much. But, um, you know, Coach Henry, again, you know, are kind of running joke with each other. You know, we watch these games, uh, whoever it may be. I mean, I've been watching Maryland one night, and I texted them. I said, you see Maryland right now? They got eight points with two minutes to go in the first half. That's kind of the time of year it is right now. You know, it really is. It gets tough uh, playing so many games in a row, and, you know, teams have scouted you to the tee, and baskets just aren't falling because of fatigue and stuff like that. Well, that was kind of us Saturday, and we trailed the majority of the game uh, to start the second half. They hit a three, and we go down 11 right away. And then we just kept chipping away, chipping away, <laughs> chipping away, chipping away. And, you know, we did some good things, uh, but we won that game just purely on guts is what it was. And, and that's a great tribute to our team because when you don't have your best stuff offensively and defensively, you just got to find a way to get it done. And, and we did, and that was, <laughs> you know, looking back on it, watching the film, and you know, reflecting, that was that was a great win for us, uh, getting northern New Mexico and keeping our win streak going. Um, so that was kind of the weekend. Uh, we traveled back through the night, uh, got home at 9:30 a.m. on Sunday. <laughs> I was I was a big old pile on Sunday. I did my best to stay awake, but I, I had to hit the couch and take a couple hour nap, and I was refreshed after that. Uh, so it was it was a good trip. I'm really glad that we did it. Uh, it was fun to be with the, this team one more time on the road. And obviously we're going to finish up at home this weekend. we got a big weekend. Uh, Coach Henry and Nate talked about what we got going on Friday night. That is a doubleheader, and our last game is Saturday. we got Northern Mexico on Saturday afternoon. Uh, so we finished the season at home, which I am extremely proud about because we are tired and we are buggered up. So just all those factors. Fishing at home is great for us. Um, we got Alexis Long here today. Who, uh, man, we should have had her along here a long time ago, but she takes about 20 credits a semester, so it's tough to get her here. Uh, so thankfully, she's able to get here today. Uh, she, this kid, you know, pound for pound, inch for inch, is by far the toughest kid on our team. Um, you know, if, I'm sure if you've been at our game, you see how she rebounds. And she she gets leverage on big six foot post players, you know, and just finds a way to get a rebound. You know, defensively, we ask a ton out of her. She has to pressure the opposing team's point guard uh, nonstop. And then the best thing I can say about her toughness is, is we switch ball screens. So every time she gets ball screen, she has to roll underneath and then guard a post player. And I bet there's, I can only remember one time this entire season that we've been scored on with her switching on a post player. That that's really impressive. That is really impressive for you know, and it just again talks about her toughness uh, as far as a basketball player. Um, you know, offensively, she has made tremendous strides this year. Her scoring is down a little bit. 
which I'm not concerned about because she's finding other ways to get us to score. You know, as a team, we're averaging more points this year than we did last year, which is a huge goal for us. And the amazing re reason why is because of Lexi. You know, last year she finished the season, the season with 57 assists, okay, and uh, a few more turnovers, 61, I believe. Now this year, with two games left, she has 76, 76 assists, and geez, I'm not sure what her turnovers are, but it's pretty close to two to one. So that that just tells you the, the strides that she's made offensively for us, uh, just being a heady point guard for us. Um, that's the probably the biggest uh, compliment I can give for her offensively this year. Um, before I bring her up, any questions for me about last weekend's games, this coming weekend's games? Good thing you got a good assistant making those adjustments. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> tell me about it. I've been there. Tell me about it. Uh, I won't elaborate on that too much. Hey, <laughs> as a head coach, you got so many things going through your mind. Then you got you got to worry about substitutions. When you have a great assistant like we do to take care of that stuff, boy, it helps a bunch. Yeah. There's there's a lot of times I walk down the bench and she grabs me and says, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I'll try to put someone in a four fouls. No, you got four. Oh, okay. I usually end up doing it anyway. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, well, Coach Paula does a tremendous job for us right there. That, well, that was really tricky for us with the short bench that we had on Saturday, the way we juggled them in and out. Well, uh, one more thing, I got I got to talk about that Friday game against San Marcos. Uh, we made a tremendous stride as a, as, as a program that gave that game. Um, we went uh, we went straight man defense on our misses uh, offensively. And any time we made a basket or there was a dead ball and they were coming at us, we went zone. I have never had the guts to be able to do that <laughs> ever. Um, but finally, I convinced myself this is what we have to do to help us win this game. And you know the kids pulled it off. Flawlessly, and it was it was a thing of beauty. You know, watch them execute that defensive game plan, and that, that's a big stride for us uh, as a program. One for me to have confidence to be able to do it, and the kids to be able to pull it off. You know, that, that's that's really big that we're able to do that right now. Uh, okay, I am done. Any more questions for me for bring Lexi up here? Thank you again for coming out. That was excellent pizza, Coach, <laughs> Coach Schaefer. Thanks for coming. We can get here quicker. Lexi. <laughs> I'm a junior from Little Minnesota, so I enjoy the warmer winters here in Rapid City. But um, I'm a Kenny, so you get your junior year, those classes really ramp up. You hear about it, you know, freshman, sophomore year, that, that junior year really hits you hard, but you really don't understand it until you get to your junior year. So surviving so far, I'm um, still on track to graduate uh, next May 2015. Um, pretty excited about my plans for the summer. First, I'm going to go to Chile for the first two weeks. Um, build a water tank for locations for orphans, and so I thought it'd be pretty cool experience, I think. And then after that, I've got an internship lined up in Sydney, Montana, kind of a oil blue Wilson base area up there. Looking for affordable housing still, if anybody knows. So it's not a man camp, I don't want to go to the <laughs> 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 really, but um, I'm looking forward to that, earn some money, and uh, get some experience, see what coming from the is really all about. Um, and then, I guess, on to basketball. Um, it's crazy how fast the season goes every year. We had two games left here. We're really looking forward to ending on two wins. You know, it's not a traditional end to season or the tournament to play um, like most other uh, teams do. But coach has done a really good job keeping us motivated. And uh, we're treating it like a tournament. We want to win these last four or five games, win every game. And um, really, win it for our seniors. They don't get the opportunity to the RMAC next year and have that tournament experience. So uh, looking forward to playing a little better against Northern New Mexico this weekend than we did last weekend and uh, finishing strong. So that's all I got. <laughs> Any questions? Are you still willing to come back and babysit my daughter in the future? I will say. I'll say you babysit her if anybody needs to. Be careful, I got four of them. <laughs> <laughs> so if, it, if it, your role changed just a little bit, you didn't have to look to score as much this year as the players that could shoot from the perimeter on the outside that came in? Yeah, I would say that's a little bit kind of how it goes. 
got lots of other things to What's your favorite part of the plan? Yeah, I guess it, just being part of the team, I... You yeah, like the ball hop and defense. Yeah, enjoy that. I, I do enjoy that. I, I love I'm a lot down, a good shooter. That's one of my favorite things. Anything else for Alexis? Yeah, I got one. Um, <coughs> Johnson and Wills is coming in, right, on Friday night. And they, one of their girls, when we were down there, broke the school record for points scored. What's your, what's your uh, uh, scouting report on her? She's not going to score. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Things before I let you run. Uh, big thanks to the Peach Ranch again, providing a hard rock for lunch special for the Great Buffet. And then Friday night, 5:30 women's game, 7:30 men's game. It is Scholar Athlete Night for the uh, Scholar Athletes that have a GPA that qualifies, and there's a lot of them, uh, as you can imagine, at the School of Mines. So we're going to bring them out. The coaches will introduce them. Uh, Coca Cola is going to do some giveaways and, and uh, senior night as well. So come out Friday night, and then don't forget. Saturday afternoon, the last basketball game of the year, uh, the Hard Rock for Women at 2 o'clock on Saturday. So thanks again for coming, everybody. We'll see you this weekend.